I really didn't believe God loved me because of what happened to me when I was little. Unfortunately, I was molested from two to five by my daddy. Brought to Philadelphia when I was six. Dumped on the system. My first set of foster parents told me that bad things happen to bad people and that God didn't like bad people. Well, I thought that God didn't like me, so I made a decision as a child to hate him. I re-met my mother when I was 13, and her husband molested me when I was 13. And so my life took off, unfortunately, for the worse. Selling drugs, doing drugs, prostituting, running the streets. Kind of did that off and on for 39 years. Wow. I get paranoid just the thought of people in my building knowing that I have HIV because as confident as I am and as much acceptance as I have, I don't do well with judgment. Being a drug addict and being HIV positive have a lot of things in common, especially stigma. <laughs> I went to the hospital, and the doctor found out that I was living with AIDS and lost his mind. Made me feel like I was a leper from the Bible. Get out, I'm not touching you, and you got AIDS. And he was a doctor, a medical professional. And it was like 2020. If I wasn't coming to civil line, I wouldn't have been prepared for that kind of stigma. And I was so grateful for being a soul mom, for having the tools that I have. Because if I was newly diagnosed that day, I would've went out and committed suicide. Stigma, sadly, is alive and well with regard to HIV. So having a safe place for people to come and feel like they can be who they are, exactly who they are, was really of paramount importance in the beginning. And I don't think the need and the value of that has changed. The name of this year's retreat is Scarred by Struggle, oh, oh. Transformed by Hope. Oh, I like that. Yes. Okay. So we're going to have a lot of good things for you to do. We are the only mind, body, and spiritual wellness center for those living with HIV and AIDS. We have Sue Cassidy doing massages. We have Pat McDonough doing either massage or Reiki. And we have Rita doing Reiki. So and what Silwam does is we fit a need for people that might not otherwise have access. Ashley, have you ever had Reiki before? No, is it food? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Okay. Reiki <laughs> is energy healing. It's food for the soul. It, yes, it's food that's for the a soul. good one. You are that's absolutely good. right. It's the only place I know that you can get into a bus with 18 strangers, and by the time you get to where you're going, you're all connected. <laughs> It works every time. It's opened the door for a lot of people. Just the camaraderie that comes from it. All of us have a chronic illness, and it pulls us all together. You know, when one person hurts, we all hurt. These retreats are really integral to the kind of work that we do and emblematic of the spirituality, the community, the self-reflection that helps all of us not just become survivors, but people who take their diagnosis and start to really thrive. Not despite HIV, but because of it. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Bob. How are you, dear? I'm home. Good. Uh, let me get that door. Yeah. yeah. The retreats are about taking a step away from it all. It is about our people thinking about themselves. It's to reflect and to store up that energy you need to get through day-to-day -day life. How you doing today? Hey. And frankly, it's not about really the diagnosis most of the time. It's about the other challenges that life presents that bring us together and finding ways to overcome those things. I was diagnosed November 18th, 2008. I remember the exact day. I was 26. That was rough. I just got out of an abusive relationship. 
I was working full time. I was going to school full time, taking care of my children. I had just got my first apartment. I was not adhering to my medication. I wasn't taking it regularly. That was one of my biggest struggles back then because it was so many other factors going on at the time. Do we have enough food? Am I gonna pay this bill or am I gonna pay the rent? Just dealing with so many things that HIV kind of took a back seat, but it was a big focus at the same time, if that makes any sense. So when I came into Silawam, I was exhausted. For people who don't have means, having HIV is a full-time job. You've got to negotiate lots of social service systems. Just the medical systems alone are quite complex. And it doesn't go smoothly. Things go wrong, records get messed up. So if you put all that together, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's not simply, oh, I'll take my medication every day and I'll be fine. Um, well, welcome everybody, as always. Appreciate you all being here. I'm going to ask Garvin, sitting next to me, if he would start us off by reading the rules. We have people that have been coming to our HIV support groups for 28 years. This is a sacred and safe space. Hate has no home here. We do not tolerate discrimination in any form. It started out with four of us, myself and three other people. And then it blossomed from there because I heard about this group where you can be yourself. And it's probably one of the best support groups in the city. I'm John and um, the virus has been living with me now since 82. And um, all in all, things are going pretty well. My life has been a roller coaster. In and out of jails, homelessness, addiction, and just a lot of instability. I was an IV drug user, and that's how I became positive. I could barely walk when I got to Silver. I got cryptococcal meningitis. I got released from prison to go stay at a hospice. Sister Byrne, Silver's co-founder, was talking one day and I heard this little angelic voice and I just sat there and listened. And she said, I belong to a facility called Silawam and we deal with people living with HIV. When I found Silawam, I was in a um, lonely stage. I, I really thought that there was no hope for me. I would never amount to anything. All my life I was on drugs, all my life I was doing things illegal. So to be a productive member of society, it was something that I had to learn how to do. I heard about Silouan, so I went down there and it was beautiful. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I met Sister Burns from the first day I went in Silouan, and she said, hey, come here, dear. Give me a kiss. And she kissed, this lady touching me and she kissing me. People used to try to stay away from me, but this lady want to come up and hold my hands. You know, for where people say, oh, get away from me. Oh, ew. You know, it was the opposite. Sister Byrne is the most wonderful, warm, and friendly person you could ever meet in your life. I've never known anyone to not love her. In one word, she is magical. She is the bomb. She's a cute little girl, isn't she? <laughs> now I'm 81, but I still think I'm 17. <laughs> I do. I entered the community of the Sisters of Mercy right after high school. So I've been a teacher and a principal. The kids were just great, and I loved teaching. But then I met someone with HIV, AIDS, and I was very conscious of how they were looked down upon terribly. It was 1995 and people were dying. The world was going insane. I mean, people were just dying like flies. So many people being ostracized. So many of us being thrown out of our houses, treated like you wasn't even a person, a human being. That's why I wanted to get involved. I wanted to help create a place where people are welcomed for who they are. She called her friend, Father Don Riley, and said, I'm really thinking of doing something with people on the fringes, and especially with HIV and AIDS. 
He called me back the next day and he said, could I do that with you? I would love to do that with you. And so they started Silwa. Silwam is about engaging, embracing, and truly loving. Father Don Riley and Sister Bernadette Canary, an Augustinian priest and a Sister of Mercy, the renegades in the church, I personally think they're rock stars because they stepped out of their comfort zone. They put their careers on the line to say, we don't want to make it religious. We want to serve all people. We want there to be no judgment. We're all members of this community. We all have different roles, maybe, but everyone brings something to the table, and we're all in it together, and we're all in it for our own growth, our own healing. I got on a train at 649. I didn't get home till 1230 because a woman jumped in front of the train. Mm. Oh, my God. People are often sharing very deeply, very painful experiences and struggles and difficulties. But I don't know why I can't get that woman out of my brain. It's a horrible tragedy. Anytime someone takes her life, the vast majority of folks involved in the community, including those of us who volunteer here, had experienced trauma. The world is not exactly a very loving place all the time. So Silouan has been a magnet for those who need love. And I've been through quite a few things in my life. It has been painful, it has been hurtful, and it has caused me to ah, get lost. But the thing is, if I didn't go through those things, guess what? I wouldn't be who I am now, and I actually love me today. My life has been a catalyst for me to support others. I am a spiritual life coach, I'm a trauma coach, I'm a recovery coach. I am 65 years old and I'm just getting started. We have the most amazing volunteers who bring their talents and bring their love to Silwam. We try to give a broad variety of classes and it was only local. And then this thing called COVID happened. And I said, okay, this is my opportunity. And within four days, I had every single group that we ran online. It started out with just like two people, three people. But every week, it's like nine or 10 people. I'm like, wow, the numbers are steady now. There are people who come from London. I have a woman from North Carolina, Oklahoma. There's a lot of people from Philly. There are people from New Jersey and we're expanding. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Grief Support Group. Today we have a special day. We're gonna talk about gratitude. Most people come because they lost someone, but then there are other things that happen. There are people who have been subject to many different things, such as addictions, trauma, rape. So, I'm there for them. Trauma is a shattering experience, so I think we, see it as an opportunity through a variety of means to be able to integrate all of that into a person who's moving toward wellness and not stuck in a shattered sense of self. That can take a long time. It's sort of like grieving, you know? Grieving doesn't necessarily ever end. It changes. Two weeks ago, I had to put closure on my daughter who'd recently passed away. So I kept hearing her in my ear saying, Dad, go to a meeting. Mm -hmm. Dad, go to a meeting. Stop crying. Stop feeling bad. Mm -hmm. When I came into Silouam, it helped me to look at me as a whole person. You know, we're not going to question you about your medicine and things like that. Let's talk about you. How are you feeling? What are you dealing with? Happy birthday to you. OK, a little faster. Happy birthday to you. As those pieces started falling together, then I was able to focus on medication and those important things. That brought me to a place now where I'm undetectable. As long as you're undetectable, you are untransmittable. I'm 40 years old. I'm 40 years old. I love my family. <laughs> I've been married for nine years. My husband is HIV negative. Years old. 
may God bless you, may God bless you, may God bless you, may God bless you, amen. Amen. Oh, Thank you. We had 11 children between the two of us. Five of them live with us, so we're a very busy household. I also have a nonprofit called I Am You, where I serve women who are living with HIV. It's my hope that somebody can benefit from the things that I've experienced. We are all loving and loved, and that that always is the truth. Always our higher power is with us, in us, and in everyone that we see. And may we always know that to be true. Amen. Anything that we do, we, we just want it to be life-giving for them. That it be something that will help them to be happy, help them to be learning more and more about themselves, becoming their own true self. Ki Odakiwa Ekarune Shimpaitsune Kanchite Jiyohokime Hitune Sensitsune. I've been coming to Silawam for about eight years. We're a family. We're all connected. We all have that need for guidance and spirit. I always enjoy the retreat. It always comes to me when I need it. Reiki is basically universal energy. My true self trying to connect with your true self. We're not separate, we're all together as one. And that's really exciting. It's a really critical for all of us to incorporate this in our health program. It's not to replace it, it's to supplement. I was kind of closed-minded at first. Like, I ain't doing this shit. <laughs> I just felt like it was like nerdy white people that did it. Fire! Most black people are not raised to do Tai Chi yoga and meditation. They help people. They deepen people. They free people. I've seen it. It's funny how you can be closed-minded about something because you weren't, like, taught. I didn't know that coming to Siloam would open up my spirit. I feel like everything's OK. <laughs> Everything is OK inside of you. Yes. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> it brings you to your center, and in your center, you are okay. What the soul of is fertile ground. When you come there, you grow. And it helped me. It helped me become a better man, and I ran with that. So some colors have symbolism, like green, it's always a symbol of hope. And I almost never do a painting, even an abstract painting, without putting at least a little bit of green in it, because there always has to be hope. So It compelled me to start making NA meetings. And then I just said, you know what? I'm going to a rehab. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's <laughs> and while I was there, I met this young lady. Well, I need to let you know today that woman is my wife. We ask you, Lord, to watch over our family, to watch over our friends. We thank you once again for the retreat with Siloam at the perfect time in our lives. Today, I'm undetectable. There's no HIV in me can be found because I'm taking my medication. We thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. You shorted me by three. Oh, I was, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It must be 10. And when you see me, you see a man that's capable. <laughs> and this is all because of me coming to Silouan, finding that place of serenity to allow me to go take that serenity and pass it off to other people. This is the pill I take to help me stay healthy, right? Y'all ready? 
I know it happened to me for a reason, because of the people that I've been able to meet since then, because of the lives I've been able to touch since then. I feel like HIV saved my life. Ready? One, two, three. Medication motivation! I stopped drinking. I stopped drugging. I eat right. I take my medication. And I don't sleep on the streets anymore. It's helped a lot. They never judged me. I could always come here whenever I wanted to. I could always get any kind of help I wanted to. That's what kept me coming back. I'm just a totally different person. And it's like a combination of God, Siloam, N.A., my grandma. Even when I'm, like, in pain or when I'm hurting, I don't know, I'm happy. See you, Bill. Thank you. Right. See you, Bill. See you, sure. Thank you. Yeah, I am Thanks for being here. All right, we'll get on. I guess we won't meet next Thursday. We will. No, no, oh, we'll. Yeah. If it weren't for Sister Brian and Death, so many of us wouldn't have no place to go. Yeah, and I'm grateful that God gave her that notion to open up Sulawan for people like me. Hi. Oh. <laughs> It has made me want to embrace all people around the world. Uh, bye, sweetie. Thank you. Love you. Love you I'll give Wendell everybody's love. Yeah. See you, my brother. Hi, Michael. Bye-bye. Nice Thank you. Because every single person is precious, we are really all one family. Bye, bye Serena. Have a safe trip home. Thank yes. you. I will meet you at Silamong. And not even just the people, the dogs and the cats and all of it. We are one family, and I love it.